Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Green Book. This movie tells the story of a world-class African-American pianist who will embark on a concert tour in the Deep South in 1962. In need of a driver and protection, he recruits a tough-talking bouncer from an Italian-American neighborhood in the Bronx. Despite their differences, the two men soon develop an unexpected bond while confronting racism and danger in an era of segregation. Will friendships with different races be established by themselves? Let's find out in Green Book. What do we do about the bones? Green Book tells the story of the friendship of an African-American pianist named Don Shirley and an Italian-American bouncer named Tony Lip based on a true story. Set in 1962 in the Bronx, a man named Tony Vallelonga is doing his job as a bouncer at the biggest nightclub in New York called Copacabana. Tony saw one of New York City's richest and most influential male patrons about to enter the club and leave his beloved hat with a female clerk. The man ordered her to keep his favorite hat because he threatened to burn the club down if it was lost. Long story short, when he was about to go home and wanted to get his hat back, the male customer was surprised by the fact that his hat had been lost. Suddenly, he was furious and threatened to burn the club down if they didn't find his hat by tomorrow. Hearing this, the club owner then announced that Copacabana would be temporarily closed until they could resolve the problem with the customer. Knowing that the club was closed, Tony who turned out to be the hat thief, then went to the customer and returned the hat. Tony makes up a story that he took the hat from a thief, but the thief managed to escape. Because he had returned his hat, the customer then gave some money to Tony. Tony then returned to his home, which he shared with his wife, Dolores, and their two sons. The following day, Tony saw his wife serving drinks to two black plumbers using their glasses. After the two black men left the house, he immediately threw away the glasses they were using in disgust. At that time, racism in the United States was still extreme because there were no laws governing racial and ethnic equality. Most white people living in the United States were racist towards black people, including Tony. That afternoon, Tony, who had already left for work, then returned home and told his wife that Copacabana was still closed because it would be renovated. He then got a call from an acquaintance who offered him a job as a personal driver for a famous pianist named Don Shirley who was planning to do an eight-week concert tour in several cities in the United States. Hearing the offer, Tony was interested and asked for Don's home address. The next day, he went to Don's luxurious house and was very surprised to find out that Don was a black man. When he met Tony, Don put on a white robe with gold embroidery and put on some gold jewelry then sat in a high chair that looked like a king's throne. Don told Tony that he needed a chauffeur and a personal assistant who could take care of all his needs during the tour for $100 a week. However, Tony then turned down Don's offer because he didn't want to be a black servant. Don then raised his offer to $125 a week. He dared to raise his offer because he saw Tony's work reference which was considered very good. After reaching an agreement, Tony finally agreed to work for Don. They started with a concert tour plan as soon as possible to return to New York City on Christmas Eve. Before embarking on the journey, several people from Don's record label gave Tony his car keys and a copy of the Green Book, a guide for African-American travelers to find the motels, restaurants, and gas stations that would serve them in Jim Crow South. Tony and Don initially clash as Tony feels uncomfortable being asked to act with more refinement, while haughty Don is displeased by his habits. In the evening, they finally arrived in Pittsburgh, where Don would start his concert, entertaining white people in a luxury hotel, together with his two musical accompaniments. Oleg and George, Don managed to put on a piano performance that was very mesmerizing and made everyone who witnessed it so shocked, including Tony. He had no idea that black people could play the piano so well. On the next tour in Hanover, as Don's assistant, Tony also had to make sure everything was prepared so that Don's concert ran smoothly. However, Tony was surprised when he found out that the piano Don was going to use turned out to be full of trash. When he asked one of the cleaners to clean the piano, the man refused and said that a piano full of trash was perfect for black people. An angry Tony beats the janitor, and Don can finally use a nicer, cleaner piano and wows the audience with his performance. Tony, who now appreciates Don more because of his ability to play the piano, then wonders why Don, who is a black man, wants to entertain white people who have always looked down on him. Tony and Don finally arrived in Raleigh for their next concert. All the white people who were there at first welcomed his presence in their midst. However, when Don was about to go to the toilet, one of the officers there asked him to use the special black toilet in the courtyard, which was only a cubicle made of wood. Doc suddenly felt humiliated because of this discriminatory treatment. He then asked Tony to drive him to their inn just to pee. Knowing the discriminatory treatment Don received from his host and the general public when he wasn't on stage, Tony was even more curious as to why Don was still keeping quiet and smiling at white people who treated him in such a discriminatory manner. 
The next day, Tony was about to write a letter to his wife and sons to express his longing for them. When Don read the letter, he thought Tony's words were terrible. He then helps Tony rewrite his letter to Dolores with more romantic and touching sentences. When Tony's letter finally arrived home, Dolores, who read it, was deeply moved by the beautiful choice of words in the letter. Tony and Don finally arrive in Memphis and stay at a hotel. By chance, Tony meets two of his friends who are very surprised to find out that he works for black men. They thought that Tony really needed money, so he wanted to become a black male servant. One of his friends then offered Tony a job, but Tony politely declined the offer. Later that evening, Tony gets a call from a friend to go out for a drink at a bar. However, when Tony left the room, how surprised he saw Don in front of his room. Don, who thought Tony would accept a job offer from his friend, then offered to double his wages to keep him working for him. But Tony assures Don that he will continue to work for him as agreed and not accept another job, even if the pay is higher. After that, Don and Tony were seen chatting in the hotel lobby, where Don told Tony about his beginnings as a pianist who was signed by a record company. Tony then suggested that Don play the piano with the music he liked, not just play classical music, because according to him, people are not really fixated on the classical music played by Don. They were actually in awe of Don's excellent piano skills, so people would definitely welcome it if he played other music on his piano. Hearing the praise and support from Tony, Don was touched. However, he was signed to a record company to play classical music after all. One night, while driving through Mississippi, their car was stopped by police officers on patrol. The cops think Don is a criminal on the run and Tony is an accomplice. Feeling insulted, Tony immediately punched one of the police officers, causing them to be thrown into prison. While they were imprisoned, Don asked to call his lawyer and use the opportunity to contact United States Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, who put pressure on the governor and then police officers to release them. Seeing the policeman looking scared after Don called someone, Tony became curious about who he was calling. As they continue their journey, Don finally reveals that he was forced to call the younger brother of the President of the United States who serves as Attorney General to get them out of prison. At first they got into a casual argument, but when Tony said that Don was a rich black man and had a perfect life, Don immediately got angry and got out of the car. Tony then goes after Don and Don angrily tells Tony that he knows absolutely nothing about him or his life. Don revealed that he had always felt alone and isolated, even though he lived a life full of wealth. White people looked down on him, and few of his people thought that he was a sycophant, an accomplice of white people. He had no one he could consider a true friend. Hearing the musician's whole outpouring of heart, Tony couldn't help but be silent and apologize to Don. The two then returned to the car and continued on their way. On the night of the last show on the tour in Birmingham, Don was again discriminated against, where he was only given a dressing room in the janitor room. In contrast, his two white musicians were given a special place that was more appropriate and luxurious. Don tried to be more patient and didn't want to fuss over trivial matters. One of the waiters stopped him and said that black people were denied entry to the white dining room. Hearing this, Tony intervened and tried to negotiate with the restaurant manager. However, the restaurant manager insisted on forbidding Don to eat in a room reserved for white people, even though Don threatened to cancel his concert at the venue. Because the restaurant manager insulted Don, Tony was about to punch him but was immediately stopped by Don, who then left the decision to Tony. Whether he wanted Don to keep doing the show or leave, Tony looks sad when Don says this, but he then decides that Don should cancel the concert and they all leave. Tony and Don then left the place and instead had dinner at a black blues club. Knowing that Don was a pianist, one of the waitresses then asked him to play the piano on stage and in return, they didn't have to pay for their meal. When Don played the piano on the stage, the club visitor suddenly fell silent and seemed so impressed by his piano playing and appreciated him. After that, Don was invited to collaborate by the band players to appear on stage, where he seemed so happy because for the first time, he could have fun playing the music he liked without pretending. After the fun was over, Don and Tony then headed to their car and rushed home. On Christmas Eve, Tony and Don experience several events and have many experiences that can change their perspective on life. But on the way, the two of them get caught in a snowstorm. When Tony was about to find a nearby inn to spend the night, Don refused and said that Tony had to go home tonight to celebrate Christmas with his family. Due to the long journey, Don then drives in Tony's place. After driving for quite a while, they finally arrived at Tony's house. Tony then invites Don to have dinner with his family, but he refuses and returns to his own house. When he gets home, Don sits alone and thinks about Tony's advice asking him to do whatever he wants and find his happiness. He then decides to visit Tony's house, where he is warmly welcomed by Tony's extended family, but now had close and even friendly relationships with black men like Don. Dolores saw Don's arrival, then hugged him and thanked him for helping Tony write a love letter for her. 
The end title cards show real-life photos of the characters and state that Don continued to tour, compose, and record songs, while Tony returned to his work at Copacabana. It also states that Tony and Don remained friends until they died within months of each other in 2013.